the story from LA about Hugo's taco stand. Um, so diners at two Los Angeles taco stands have screamed, cursed, and thrown drinks on employees trying to enforce a no mask, no service policy, the LA Times reports. It became so exhausting that Hugo's Tacos has closed down both shops to give workers a break, owners wrote in a post on Twitter. And um, this is something that we've, I think, sort of, uh, I don't know if, we, if we've really discussed this in any depth here on the show, um, but one of the big problems with these um one of the big problems with these mask orders is that somebody has to enforce them. And we're seeing what happens when, say, employees at Costco try to enforce them. And what happens when it's a police officer, somebody with a gun who has to enforce this? Things could get ugly. I mean, we're seeing people get just irate about not being able to get tacos because they're not wearing a mask. It's absolutely insane. This is a very simple thing that you can do to make the people safe around you. And if it's their establishment, if it's their taco stand, well, doggone it, you don't have a right to start screaming and cursing at uh, the employees. But on, on the on the other side of this is you have people who are calling for mask ordinance ordinances, and a number of them have been put in place around the valley in Phoenix. And uh, I don't know if, if Mesa voted on it yet. But there were some indications that that he was going to. So there, there are some of uh, the major cities around the Phoenix metro area that have put these in place. And, and the problem is exactly what we're seeing here, that eventually, you know, hopefully we're not going to see stories like this about the Phoenix area, about Arizona. But I'm a little surprised we haven't seen a bunch of them, frankly, uh, be, because people have been furious at Costco, at this taco stand, you know. And, and when, so when, when people say that we should have a mask ordinance, they're not thinking about the cost. I mean, I know what their, their reasoning is. If we have an ordinance, if it's the law, people will probably obey the law. They may not obey, uh, you know, guidance, whether it's from the CDC or the WHO or the governor or whoever is. People just don't believe the media. They don't believe any of these authorities. But maybe they would obey a law is the thinking. And and my thinking is, you know, especially after the last few weeks of, you know, we had riots, we had the George Floyd incident. Um, and and you have a lot of people who are, who've been cooped up in their houses for months They're And and they're just a lot of people are unemployed. This is something that has potential to add a lot of tension and become an unnecessary flashpoint because we're asking police to adjudicate. Something that's frankly, you know, very creepy crap. I, I, I don't, I understand that that coronavirus is a serious thing, but you know, a- asking the police to enforce the masks when you have the option of social distance. If you see somebody who's not wearing a mask, you can avoid them, and you probably should because, th- you know, th- there's a lot of cases. There's a lot more cases every single day. Um, but, but getting the police involved has its own dangers and, and nobody is addressing that. Everybody's a little afraid, I think, to, to mention that, you know, when, when you have a law and it's going to be enforced by people with guns, you know, not bad people, but people, you know, that, that, that it, it, this is just a powder keg and, and we're seeing it right here. And I, I don't understand how. Um, I don't know if the police are even really enforcing it here in Arizona. Uh, maybe you have some insight into that, but it, it seems like this is just so reckless to pass these these ordinances. I, I did want to mention because you, you talked about Mesa. Mesa does have a mask ordinance that actually went into effect on June twenty second. Uh, so they've actually had a mask ordinance for quite a while. Um, I'm actually reading it right now, and I was checking it out as you as you were talking, and it applies to individuals over six years old. Um, it does exempt, you know, restaurant and bar patrons while eating or drinking. So it's very typical of the other orders that we've seen um, in, especially in Maricopa County in Arizona. Uh, should be mentioned, Maricopa County itself does have a county ordinance, um, which uh, that only entails a $50 civil fine. Uh, but that does, um, but, but people sometimes, I think they forget um, when it comes to, okay, so you say it's only a $50 civil fine. Right. Well, who's supposed to enforce that? Well, in terms of the the um, county order, they specifically say law enforcement. So theoretically, a deputy sheriff is supposed to be enforcing that countywide. They still have to stop you in order to issue a citation. And as you mentioned, uh, that can still become a very hairy situation for someone that simply says, I'm not going to do it. You know, make me, <laughs> you know, and in the case of uh, when we talk about the, the county ordinance, 
well, you can't really make them. You have to issue a citation, right? Uh, and then they have to, this is, you know, theoretically go to court. Well, what if they don't want to take the citation? What if they just right. start walking away? If they start yeah. walking away, then the officer or deputy has to detain this person. What if and, they can't pay? Well, even even before the payment issue, the, the, the real the real danger is the issue of the person that says, you know what, I'm not going to accept the citation. I'm leaving. Yeah. And so, you know, under under state law, uh, the officer or deputy can detain that person. Uh, and the question becomes now, <laughs> this becomes a use of force situation because the person physically doesn't want to stop, then mm -hmm. the officer or deputy has to physically stop them. If yeah. a person, you know, it, and I can tell you, if, if a person doesn't want to be detained, if a person doesn't want to stop, it is difficult to stop them. And you have to use force to stop them. And you may hurt them. And you may get hurt in stopping them. So it, it, it opens up uh, a, a large can of worms. And I think that that's kind of your larger point uh, when it comes to some of these mask ordinances. Now, we did have a, a, a fairly high profile uh, protest, although it was kind of high profile for all the wrong reasons. Uh, here in Scottsdale, uh, we had a mask protest. Um, I found a pretty good article actually from uh, the local paper. This is the, uh, the progress, the Scottsdale progress. And it says mass protest puts Phillips on the hot seat. Uh, for people that don't know, this is Councilman Phillips. He is the person who organized uh, the actual protest in Scottsdale, Arizona. And so this article is, is fairly balanced actually. It does talk about both sides of it, but it, but it doesn't really focus as much on, on, on the issue itself as it does on the comments that, uh, that Congressman Phillips, or, I'm sorry, Councilman Phillips made uh, in particular, some of you may have seen it because it's gone viral. Uh, when he took his mask off, he said, I can't breathe. And a lot of people got upset about that because they felt that he was quoting George Floyd and making light of George Floyd uh, in saying that. Uh, so this article does give uh, Councilman Phillips' response. Uh, it's pretty far down in the article. There's actually a lot of quotes in this article. It's a pretty, pretty darn good article, uh, to be honest. And I, I always uh, make sure to put my articles in the description of the uh, YouTube when I actually edit the YouTube. So if anybody's interested in this article, um, they, they, they do talk about a lot of perspectives here where people are condemning Phillips and people that are defending him and people that participated in the actual protest itself, uh, which I didn't realize how many people did. Um, but he's, it says, Phillips said his position was, we don't need the government to tell us COVID is real. We know it is. Most people are okay. Some people get real sick. Sadly, some die. But the government giving out tickets isn't going to help. Education is. I say education, not subjugation. That's what Phillips' actual position is. That's what his position was stated. That was stated when he was organizing the protest. Yeah. I looked at his Facebook post. That's his position. His position is not that you should not wear masks. He does advocate wearing masks. But he says that it should not be an actual citation that's given. And, and I want to make sure that that message is put out there because it's a message that I personally agree with. I do not believe that these, um, whether it's a civil site or it's a misdemeanor, you know, misdemeanor means it's arrestable. But a civil citation can become arrestable very quickly if you refuse to submit. If you say, I am not going to submit to this ticket, if I'm not going to allow myself to, to get this ticket, I'm going to keep walking away, then that will become a criminal situation because you're going to end up into a, in a fight with that deputy or that officer that's trying to issue the citation. Right. So I, I just want to make sure that, that that message isn't completely taken away simply because of what Phillips said, uh, what some people took as a quote uh, from, um, from, from George Floyd, uh, which he denies, by the way. In this article, he says he, he did not... Uh, he was not trying to um, invoke George Floyd, um, so I don't know. I, I don't know yeah, this man's tell, heart. Right? Yeah. I don't know this man's heart. I think. I think in a lot of. I, I mean, I've seen the moment. I mean, he was taking the mask off and saying, "You know, I can't breathe. I can't breathe in this thing." Um, and by the way, there are medical exemptions in most of these ordinances uh, because there are people that have medical advice that say they are not supposed to wear a mask. And I, I just want to throw it out there. There's no way to know that. So a very easy way to deal with this, if you were 
approached by an officer or deputy or whoever is to say, oh, sorry, I have a medical exemption and walk away because there's no way for them to disprove that. And even these ordinances say that. So you just say, I have a medical exemption. Sorry. Keep walking, you know. Um, But this article article did mention uh, that obviously most of these protesters were not wearing masks, um, which I would not advocate for. I would not advocate going to a protest and not wearing a mask. If I had attended this event, I would have worn a mask. Um, But the interesting thing about that is they were violating the ordinance, right? Because there is a very strict ordinance in Scottsdale about wearing masks. But uh, the officer that they quoted in this article said they did not issue any citations because the Scottsdale Police Department does not want to issue citations. They are uh, promoting a policy of education. So that's obviously the department's policy. Uh, I think most uh, departments in Arizona are following a similar policy where they are advocating for education. They do not want to enforce these orders, which of course leads to why have them then? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's a natural question. If the police are oh. not to enforce these things, you know, why have them? Because if people know that the ordinance is there, they're more likely to follow the the guidance than if not. Um, I think that's actually a really good thing. I mean, I know it's grandstanding. I know it's, you know, kind of phony baloney politics, but I would much rather have an unenforced ordinance that has some effect, you know, convinces some people to wear masks than have a, an ordinance where you're going to, uh, like, a, as we've discussed, you know, potentially have um, people flipping out on, on cops and getting into fights with deputies. And, you know, I, I don't want to see that. Well, as we've seen with George Floyd, it only takes one incident. It only takes one bad incident. And, yep. and it only takes, and it really only takes one bad officer mm-hmm. uh, to create. Yeah, we don't want to see that. Yeah, to create a an absolutely uh, terrible situation. So right, yeah, it can spiral out of control.